going on? It is. <laughs> Welcome everybody today. I'm tired. It's, it was rough. I'm awake. Here we go. It's April 2nd, 2024. There's just about four minutes to go to the cash open here on this Tuesday morning. Spoos are off by 45 handles. Ah, a little perspective over here. First of all, 45 handles is not even a 1% move, but the NASDAQ is moving to the tune of 1%. Oh, there's always something that comes to mind. We've actually gone the longest string of, uh, of trading sessions without like a two or 3% move in, uh, in any recent history. Um, I, you'd have to go back many, many years to see strings of, uh, I think it's, Oh, maybe 2017, but I think we uh, we beat that streak of less than, uh, I think it was 2% move. I'm just doing that off the top of my head. I have to look at the data geek. Anyway, uh, we're not even at a 1% move, so uh, just, just calm down. One of the things, though, that is worth noting is where we're going to open. So this uh, this line on your screen, let me uh, let me just bring this up. Yesterday, we finished... Not really down, but kind of down. But this line on your screen right there, right there is uh, 52.43. The lower edge of the expected move is 51.91. And uh, well, lo and behold, we're pretty much going to tag that right at the open. I mean, we're really close to it. It's, uh, it's just a hop, skip, and jump away. Again, yesterday's session was, uh, was kind of a moot point, but uh, there's definitely uh, a little bit of a fever pitch in the air today. Volume has also, uh, it's rocking. So volume, you know, 250,000 contracts is, is pretty nominal. But when I say volume is rocking, all the volume started raging <clears throat> right uh, this morning at about 5.30. And it is, this is pretty heavy volume right now, but it's uh, it's not the, uh, the S&Ps that are on my mind. It's the bond market. If you are familiar with bonds, 275,000 contracts, that's not just heavy volume. That's actually record breaking. By the way, you can see the inflection in my voice. It's record breaking. <laughs> I need some more coffee. This, I need some more coffee, man. This is, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a slow start for Don today. I don't know why, I was fine. I was, I was going and then I, I, I hit, the, uh, hit the wall here a few minutes ago. But mm, uh, also uh, quite, quite inflationary. Oil continues to uh, have a bid under it. The dollar, surprisingly, is getting whacked back a little, just a little bit today. But I'd be careful with that notion. As I keep talking about, it, it was going to hit the 105 level. 105 is critical. If it cracks above 105, it's just on. So we have a day where we're seeing decent amounts to sell side. You've actually got movement and volatility. It's one of the bigger moves you've seen lately in terms of volatility. But uh, again, a lot of this is predicated, first of all, Tesla's getting smashed a little bit. But the deliveries whatever. Um, there's actually some more interesting stuff going on. It's, I'll show that after the cash open. Um, NVIDIA taking a little bit of a hit in here, the, whatever, it's 20 points. You know, it has a $32 expected move in the next couple of days, but it's like a 20 point move. The whole key to today, right? Uh, I know everybody wants to point out to individual stocks. You can point at anything you want. First of all, perspective. This is a nothing move. If you want to see a big move, go look at uh, crypto. That's a big move. That's a crash. Okay, that is either a crash, the beginning of the crash, but that's a 7% move. If that was the S&Ps, <laughs> that was a little early, <laughs> I a premature horn. But if that was the S&Ps, that would be uh, significant. We're not even at a 1% move. Let's come to today's cash open. Big negative advance decline line, big negative. So AD line into the open is, uh, is not, is not full blown correlation. But we've been pointing out that correlation has actually been picking up quite substantially as of late. And uh, you're seeing just that. Obviously, you're going to see stocks like uh, Humana, uh, CVS, they're getting smashed. Um, that's, uh, and again, there are some fairly big moves in here. You know, it's 5 and 7% moves. Uh, there's Tesla, there's United Healthcare. The uh, the Dow is going to get whacked because of United Healthcare pretty good. It's actually kind of holding it together thus far. It's not even a 1% move. Nevertheless, in terms of ticks, what do you got? Big negative ticks, but forget all of that. It's all, it's all for nothing, man. Okay, this is the most important player in the room. Uh, and we pretty much called that verbatim. You're uh, at the lower edge of the expected move. I'm home. It's uh, it got tagged pretty much at the cash open, so we're home when it comes to the lower edge of the expected move. 
Therefore, just time out your entire trading session today. If you're not keyed into this, get keyed into it. You know, I know people are all, you know, attuned to the fact that the S&Ps are down some 42 or 43 points, which you should be. But at this point, okay, that's, that's old news, right? You know, at this point, what you need to focus on is exclusively, you know, uh, not what happened, but what's coming. And what's coming is that line over there. So what's going to happen here is we're actually going to come down. We're going to come a little bit below. We're going to come up. We're going to skirt the line. The whole question, literally, for the trading session, do we break off the lower edge of the expected move? Okay. So we always assign, all right, degrees of uh, and capability of movement in and around the lower edge of this expected move. So let's actually define what we actually think that level is. That level is, uh, let's say, 5192. 5192. So let's define right here as. 51.92. That's literally the line on your screen there, right? So initially, okay, I think you can have about uh, 12 points off that, but we're in pretty high volatility. So it's anywhere from 12 to 14 points. So 12 points higher, okay, and 12 points lower. So 51.92. And again, we're talking about the SPX. It does differ from the ES. Okay, it's, you know, cost of carry, yada, yada. Cost of carry is actually one of the most critical ones because when you go out and you buy the S&P futures, you have cost carry built in there, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, the critical levels today, in my opinion, in the SPX will be 5180. And you can convert 5180 into, you know, ES terms, whatever does it for you, okay? Um, or in this particular case, you know, a rally back up Oh, somewhere right in this neighborhood here, we'll call it uh, 5204, right? That's supposed to be, you know, 5204. That would be my assumption for the trading day. And I know how simple, you know, this analysis, the 5204 is kind of hard to read. It's a five, man. 5204. Uh, that almost looks like 5204. That's working for me. Anyway, don't get ahead of yourself. Because it, oh, it's gonna it's gonna do this, it's gonna do that. Right now, okay, we're trapped on the lower edge of an expected move, right? I was actually just writing an email about this last night, and it's it's interesting because uh, in statistics, in statistics, if you take a quick glance at a distribution curve, okay, <clears throat> right now where we are is right here, the lower edge of the expected move. In fact, I'll even change the, uh, the color so you can see that better. So right now we're here, which is the lower edge of the expected move. And the, uh, the truth be told, in statistics, okay, you know, you're supposed to, okay, it's a one standard deviation move, but in trading, we're actually often drawn to the edges of expected move. So we're obviously drawn to the edges of expected move in this particular case. We're drawn literally to here. And you say, well, why? Because that's where there's incredible amounts of skin in the game. So outside of what you might think mathematically, skin in the game, which is, you know, real tangible assets that are, you know, being basically traded on either side of this 5192, 5192 in a one standard deviation move is like an averaging formula. So everything averages to this 5192 and we actually get drawn and pulled right into that line. We do that because again, there's hedging activity and hedging activity draws you to the edge. Anyway, so once you get drawn to the edge of this expected move, the whole question then for the trading session is, do we break off of it? And breaking off of it doesn't look like, oh, we're two points below. Nobody gives a damn we're for two points below. As I always say, you know, there's uh, what we term degrees of freedom on here. And it's a different expression than maybe I know that the engineers get all crazy, start sending me like, you know, emails. Degrees of freedom means something else. Okay. Look, we're not building a freaking bridge, are we? <laughs> We are, uh, we're trading here. And uh, in this particular case, you have 12 points in either side of an expected move. Now that, that varies that, 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 you know, how much like flex or fluff we have on either side of the expected move varies. Okay. Based on what? Based on how much coffee I've had that day. No. Um, how much, you know, area we have around the expected move, it varies and it varies dependent upon volatility. So today though is an interesting day because volatility is starting to pick up. So 
12 points might not be enough. It's usually between 10 and 12 points. And you'll know if we break off or, or we rally back, all of a sudden there'll be this surge of volume. So let's talk about that. So as I said, the highest probability is here. We come down, we do a little dance, we make a little love, we get down tonight, and we just kind of skirt the line throughout the course of the day, meaning we skirt you know, this 51.92. Now, there's always a chance for a rally back. How will you know if we rally back? We'll get above 52.04, and then you'll see huge volume in the S&Ps. Conversely, that means on the opposing side, if we actually come down, we start crossing through 51.80, volume will surge in the S&P futures. So all of a sudden I'm relating SPX, SPX, and then I'm talking about S&P futures. And you go, well, why the hell do you look at the SPX if it's the S&P futures? Because the S&P futures are the natural hedge for SPX. There is no underlying in the SPX. You go, what about the spiders? Yeah, I got it. But spiders okay, are not as capital friendly as would be S&P futures. One S&P future, which has about, uh, what, about $15,000 of overnight margin right now, uh, one S&P future is the equivalency of 500 shares of the spiders. So why hedge 500 shares of the spiders be charged SEC fees, yada, 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 when you can actually just trade the, uh, the futures contract, which is basically 500 shares of the spiders. If you're a derivatives firm, it makes more sense to trade the, uh, the S&P futures. Everybody good with that? Okay, because these levels are going to matter throughout the course of the day. It doesn't, you know, you're in a situation right now where you actually have to say in your brain, time out. Okay, volatility rules, okay? And with volatility rules, I don't mean like volatility rules. <laughs> I mean, it's, you're in a volatile market, okay? And the rules of volatility now apply. Volatility rules, man. Um, uh, I'm amusing myself, okay? That's, that's, that's not about you, it's about me. It's about my amusement. Um, anyway, by the way, People always ask, you know, I would still sit here and say this exact thing to myself, even if you guys weren't tuned in <laughs> in the same manner too. you know, at least it goes through my head <coughs> for <a> ball <laughs> uh, continuing on the, the coffee's starting to kick back in. I want to come back to the S and P futures for a second. So ticks, ticks, they've actually, you know, softened a little bit in there. Okay. Is everybody okay? It's kind of quiet in the chat room. The hell's going on in here today? Uh, anyway, the uh, the advanced decline line starting to pick up a little bit to the downside. Sell side activity. The way I look at it, though, there's 19 other things you could sell on the screen. The energy sector continues to be relatively strong. Um, there was a number yesterday that I mentioned we had to cross through. I think it was um, was it 94.71 was the previous high. I'm just trying to remember out of like memory over here. Somewhere right back here. Yeah, it was. It was 94.71. We obviously cracked through it and we're out of the contest. Okay. Hmm. So uh, we're just a few moments into the trading session. The S&P's Okay, on a collision course lower. There's heavy, heavy volume in the first nine minutes trade this morning. And uh, damn, the NASDAQ's actually really starting to get whacked. This looks like another significant leg lower right here that you're on, okay? <clears throat> I wouldn't pay too much attention. So you already know Tesla's down, okay? Let's, let's not worry about and have a discussion about that yet. Uh, the players in the room, of course, are gonna be NVIDIA, okay? You never forget, NVIDIA got us here. Let's go look at its order flow. When I say NVIDIA got us here, you look at the S&Ps and you realize it's a $5,246 product. You're not even at a 1% move yet, okay? Everybody at this point, so you looked at NVIDIA, okay, we're gonna look at order flow in a second. But I wanted to stop for a second. I want you to think about the last time we really saw some sell side activity, okay? Time out. Everybody is screwed up about this, okay? Because you're looking uh, you're looking at your screens right now and you're thinking, damn, this is a big move. S&Ps are down 52 points. Remember, we're now just approaching. There it is. It's a 1% move. Yay. By the way, this is golf clap. Okay. Want to know why it's a golf clap? It's a 1% move. You know, and if you looked at this <clears throat> and it's the first time you've seen sell side activity in what? Well, November, December, January, February, March. Okay, you passed through five months. You haven't seen any sell side activity. The last time we saw sell side activity, the damn thing was at 4,122, which means a 1% move needs, well, 52 handles. You need 52 handles for a 1% move. 
I know this sounds ridiculously simple, okay? I have actually been with traders, okay, that were like MIT, PhD, and they screw this up constantly. Oh, damn, man, look at the futures. They're down 50. I'm like, you know, hey, Captain Obvious, that's still only a 1% move. You have to actually remember now that if we're going to have a 3% move and the first time you start getting to what we term statistical significance would be like a 3%. And that's, that's not my terminology. That would be, you know, market geeks that are, uh, that, that be like a 3% move <clears throat> and a 3% move uh, at this point is like 150, 160 handles in the S and P's. That's a big freaking move. <laughs> okay. That's a big freaking move right now. You aren't seeing anything. All right. The NASDAQ is getting, interesting. Okay. What does interesting mean? It means interesting. You know, it's down a percent and a half. Uh, the NASDAQ has made some oh, decent moves. There were little days of selling in here. There was fear. There was loathing. That was in the beginning of the year. Uh, literally, it's the first time. So we have the first chance, okay, since the first week of the year, this is the first chance we are really cracking the lower edge of the expected move. Now, okay, on that front, and we'll come back to NVIDIA, we'll look at some order flow, because I think NVIDIA order flow might be flipping over here. Let's, let's go look at this for just a second. Son of a, okay, clicking on crap over here. Uh, they're starting to buy puts a little bit. Nothing crazy, let's not get crazy. But all I wanna see is in big days of sell side activity, do we actually start buying puts? Because if you're buying puts, it's gonna cause what? If you're buying positive delta, the market makers are actually having to sell a use of it. Well, if you're buying, I should say negative delta, the market makers would be taking the other side, which is positive delta, and having to short the stock. I said that kind of fast. We'll come back to that later. I want to look back at the S&Ps for just a second, because what is important right now, right, is, well, obviously the broader marketplace. Now, buying puts inside of NVIDIA is interesting, but the broader marketplace, percentage moves, um, to me, this is what's what's so critical. I also like to look at things like, again, the expected move, which if you look, as I said, what the day will come down to, okay? And it, and it son of a, I clicked, I clicked. That was me. Come on, come on, there it is. What the day will come down to, as I said, we're gonna come right down to this line. And it feels ridiculous, but you're drawing this line on, uh, well, we just came into a three-day weekend. I drew that line on a Friday morning you know, or on a, on a Friday afternoon, and all of a sudden, a week later, you know, or a couple of days later, here we are on Tuesday, um, you know, four or five days later, the market's in the midst of what you think is heavy volatility, and yet it adheres perfectly to a line. Remember one thing about the expected move, one thing and one thing only, okay? It is not the magical mythical beast of 618, because, uh, if you guys get started with your little 618s, I'm, um, I got your 618 right here. Uh, I'm talking about Fibonacci's. It's not a magical mythical beast. It's just basically like an averaging model that says like, this is where risk lies for all the big trading firms. Okay, And every single week, okay, it has dead accuracy. I mean, it's incredible. Like it's, you know, you talk about the most accurate tool in the marketplace and okay, <clears throat> the weeklies have actually brought more efficiency to this. Um, how many trading days have we sat here and just watched, you know, we close on the upper edge of the expected move. We close on the upper edge of the expected move. We trade to the lower edge of the expected move. You know, it's just, it's week in and week out. So when I bring this up first thing, and I tell you, like, literally, we're going to come down here, do a little dance, make a little love, get, a, you know, a chance to break off the 5180. We'll see. Okay. And there's, I don't want to discount the ability to rally out of this either. I mean, yeah, you come into a day that there's, you know, emerging a little bit of volatility, uh, check your baggage at the door. Okay. You have some baggage. Yeah. Do you have some baggage? Cause, uh, you got to check whatever you think at the door coming into a trading session like this, especially like a day like this, you've seen one, literally, I'm going to zoom into this for a second. There has been one down a okay, week one breach of expected move to the downside this entire year. Now, whatever, we're through the first quarter. Well, it's only a couple of weeks. That uh, The one unusual thing in here, there's only one breach, two breaches, three breaches. There's been four breaches, you know, which is statistically, that's fine, okay? There's only been four breaches of expected move, but this kind of looks like something today. 
I mean, I don't know if it's going to happen today, but we definitely look like there's some real risk starting to, uh, to emerge in here. Um, with that being said, down the list, some of the usual suspects, and we'll, we'll come back to a few things. And, you know, you'll, you'll also see me not on trading days like this. Don't look a lot at your positions, okay? You can look at them all you want, whatever, whatever, man, okay? Um, the only thing that you want to look around for today is, is any crap making money, okay? Is your crap making money? Because uh, if it's not, who the hell cares? So we're seeing an expansion of volatility. Do not expect all your premium selling portfolios. Some of them might be up a little bit, but if you're selling out of the money premium, like out of the money puts, and we start to move down, the calls might make some money. But what's going to happen is this, the premium expands because VIX is going up uh, today. Most of the premium selling portfolios, I mean, some of them might look okay, but they're not looking like spectacular. That's okay. That's normal. Okay. That's very, very normal. Um, by the way, I think we're going to move uh, uh, another leg lower here. So just bear with me. I, I believe we're going to move a leg lower on the S&Ps, not because I'm looking at the chart over here. We look like we're amping higher on volatility and getting ready to punch through uh, to the downside, okay? The dark side. Uh, just because I'm looking at this doesn't necessarily pretend that we're going to break lower, but we're definitely amping for some volatility here. We look like... We're pretty damn close to breaking lows on the uh, the bonds. Speaking of the bonds, can't stress this enough. The bonds, that is epic size. 300,000 contracts at this point in the day is epic. Look how big the bond volume really is. Now, granted, I know that everybody, well, we had a holiday trade last week. Good, That was four days of holiday trade last week. What's your excuse You know, of weeks of absolutely nothing? The bonds, okay, have not found their way until clearly today. They have found their way. It is to the downside. As they start to break lower, we're already here. Yesterday, we did this. Today, we, we're doing more volume today than we have done in many recent trading sessions, more than here or here or here or there, okay? Anyway, that is some big size in bonds. Notes. Okay, epic volume. Look at this, 1 point, almost 2 million contracts are already trading. The CME is like, yeah, <laughs> this is some size. Why do I give a damn? Why should you give a damn? Because it is confirmation that a real, okay, they're real and they're spectacular. It's confirmation that a real move is, uh, is underway. We've cracked inside of the, uh, in the bond market. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said it. Okay. I said it. Anyway, I'm adjusting for contract changes just to show you. We've had a, uh, a breach lower, which actually brings me over to the TNX. Okay. TNX is a, uh, is a break to the upside. By the way, Eric, yes, I'm going to talk about that here momentarily because I already have my alarm set. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about that. There is uh this is the highest interest rates. Okay. We've seen really since kind of mid-November when uh, markets were under duress in here, okay? That, that is the S&P 500 was under, I mean, we were really selling off into like late November or uh, late October. Right here, the S&Ps were getting hammered. The rally actually began, okay, there. All of a sudden, we've gone vertical again with interest rates. So look, I know that everybody wants to talk about Fed fund futures until they're blue in the face, right? Um, <laughs> they want to talk about Fed fund futures to the blue in the face. Who cares? Okay. The Fed's going to do this. Listen, the Fed, if you didn't know, uh, they're malleable. <laughs> like politicians, they're malleable. Okay. They'll change their mind like 50 times over here. But what you should pay attention to is like TNX. TNX is actually, uh, this is a warning sign. We're breaking uh, to the upside. Interest rates are really starting to pick up. But I will say this, okay? There are, I know that everybody's like, there's signs of strength in the economy. Have you not looked at a couple of the stocks though today that are getting hammered? So now let's cruise over to Tesla. Tesla got whacked back a little bit. Look, I wouldn't read too deeply into Tesla. Tesla's deliveries were not that good. 
Okay, their Q1 deliveries were not that good. And I'm not sitting here trying to defend Tesla, okay? However, the deliveries were not good because the Model 3 went through like a big change. It's sort of like they're, you know, basically one of their biggest sellers along with the Model Y. Um, their Model 3 went through a complete remodel. And in doing so, they stopped all deliveries of that, uh, of that vehicle for a period of time. They also had an arson event, okay? And I think it was one of the plants in Berlin. I'm doing this off the top of my head, okay? Um, it's, again, almost should be like, feels like it should be kind of priced into the marketplace. Like the market should have known this was coming. Uh, it's only getting hit by the tune of 5%, okay? In, in my opinion, I think you might see Tesla bounce a little bit here because it might be a little bit of an overreaction on that front. Bear with me. By the way, anecdotally, um, <clears throat> I look at Tesla, okay? Forget about Elon Musk, okay? Whether you love him or hate him, it's okay. All right, well, by the way, let's let's get the consensus in the chat room here, okay? Elon Musk, love or hate? Come on, just put love or hate inside of the chat room. Elon Musk, love or hate? I'm just curious where everybody kind of stands with this one. <laughs> I was listening to a uh, to a podcast the other day. Um, it was an old, a little bit of older one, but he was on, and it was uh, it's pretty good. It was actually pretty good. <laughs> Never really been that big of a fan. I'm not as much of a. I'm a fanboy maybe of Tesla, but uh, not necessarily Elon Musk. Okay, I'm just curious over here. But I got to tell you, <laughs> the uh, the don't care. All right. I got to tell you, I was uh, pretty, pretty damn impressed when he was on that podcast uh, and a bunch of them that he's done. You, you can't, <clears throat> can't deny <laughs> who. All right. Wow. Overwhelmingly people like the loves have it. Okay. I like that respect. All right. That's, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> anyway, the reason I was bringing that up. So for the first time, I didn't tell, I don't think I told you guys this, uh, I saw the uh, the Cybertruck for the first time, uh, not just on the road. I uh, pulled into a parking lot here and it's uh, or like a little local grocery store. In this parking lot is like the most ridiculous vehicles you've ever seen. Like every time you go into the supermarket, there's the Lamborghinis, the Ferraris. It's, it's literally the supermarket of like Paradise Valley. It's absolutely ridiculous, okay? The vehicles that are in there. We're talking every single time, there'll be a lineup of $2 million of vehicles. Cybertruck was actually parked there. And I happened to know the family that just got it. I haven't seen him forever. We just know him from around the schools and everything. So we went to family and we went and checked it out. Holy crap. You want to talk about a, uh, it doesn't, I don't care whether you think it's a cool vehicle or not. Okay. The crowd that that vehicle brought. Okay. You've never seen that ever before. There's nothing on the road. I've never seen anybody crowd around classic cars like that. Nothing. There's nothing like, not even if an aircraft landed there, nobody would give a damn in comparison to how many people were coming out of the supermarket to literally see the Cybertruck. I, I was shocked and we got to go all through it and so forth. His kids were pretty stoked. He only got it like three days before. Um, and it was like, you know, the, uh, the founder's edition or whatever. It was pretty freaking cool. Um, just to see the number of people that were interested in it <coughs> and the comments were like, there were people like, it's so ugly. I can't wait to buy it. <laughs> I mean, that's the comments are like, damn, is that thing ugly? Okay. And uh, when I have one, I'm going to wrap it. <laughs> that's everybody had a comment. None of them were like, I think my wife was the only one. She's like, Ugh, don't be parking that thing in my garage next to my car. And I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if it'll fit, but it's not that big. Anyway. Um, I mean, I don't care again, whether, Impressive, not impressive. The crowd at Drew, probably, I don't know, 50, 100 people within a matter of about 30 seconds. You know, people don't care about a damn thing. There could be a car fire and they would actually like, eh, seen that before. But the, uh, it was pretty amazing. Okay. So that is one where I, I'm not going to discount uh, Elon. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be shorting him anytime soon. When you see, again, the sheer number of people over there, okay? Um, it was not at Costco, okay? It's just a supermarket. <laughs> it's just a supermarket. Supermarket, though, in a really, really nice area that um, they had valet parking in your supermarket, car washes, covered parking. <laughs> Every supermarket has that, right? 
anyway, uh, the advanced decline line is getting a little bit better. So here we are. We're about 25 minutes into the trading session. And uh, I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> okay, it's a, it's a DeLorean. Okay, again, there was no comments needed on that. The bottom line was you've never seen that many people so interested in anything. I just, I haven't. Okay. When was the last time you saw people actually move out of their way, put their phones in their pockets, other than the people that were taking pictures of it to do anything? That was my only point. Because that was actually my point that I was making to my wife. My kids weren't actually with me. Um, anyway, uh, although I think he's probably going to drive over to the place um, so the kids can actually uh, torture each other in the Cybertruck uh, maybe this weekend. We'll see. Anyway, um, uh, so we're 25 minutes into the trading session. Now, now you're just sitting on the lower edge of expected move. Okay. Literally. Okay. When I say we're, we're going to hit this line, we're going to, we're going to ebb and flow on it. I mean it. Okay. Here we go. You have three minutes to go and you're actually going to get a big number that's coming out. First of all, look at the calendar really quick. Jolts, factory orders. Both of those are fairly critical. That could definitely be a market making event. How are we going to know? We're actually going to look at the April 2nd expected move. It's down to 20. That's not that big, but you can have a $20 move like that. I'm actually relatively surprised that volatility is as chill as it is right here. So this is today's volatility. It's only at a $20 expected move. Now, granted, we've already had a $53 expected move, but news is actually going to come in the next two minutes. Uh, the volatility <clears throat> clearly sees it. We're amped on volatility. Okay, We are hanging out near lows with the bond market, okay? If you take a look at the financials, we haven't even looked at sectors. They're near lows, okay? Look at this, meta diverges back to the upside. Okay, there's good in here, there's, there's not so good. I find this trade pretty amazing. This is a marketplace that's trying to bid back up in the face of adversity. This actually could be a great intraday trade opportunity. We'll see what comes out of this. There's definitely put buying going on inside of Meta. Okay, if this market rallies, you're going to get your face ripped off in here. But, oh man, this is an expensive scalp. Okay, to go intraday, you got to go almost to like a 56 delta. You can get torn apart though in here. You know, <clears throat> this is a marketplace though that has got a bid back under it with news about to come out. I have to back away for right now. I don't think I'm actually going to try to take this trade. You do have okay, a hint of meta rallying, but it's interesting because you got Microsoft down at lows of the trading session, news coming out, Tesla at lows, NVIDIA. Okay, NVIDIA is just kind of flowing near lows. I, uh, again, I don't have a great feel for why, you know, uh, Tesla's back or Tesla, Apple's back to the opening range. One minute to go to the announcement. This is going to be a big market mover, right? I'm going to let... I'm going to let Meta play for just a brief moment. This is an attempt at a uh, at a shift of capital into this, okay? And the reason I'm so like infatuated with that is it could be an incredibly big opportunity if this thing's to break back down, okay? I mean, here it is with almost a $13 expected move in the next three days. Stock's actually up with the rest of the marketplace down. They're going to pummel Meta if this marketplace tanks. If we rally a little bit, so be it. Speaking of rally... Uh, Google, okay. Google had a huge day yesterday, giving about half of that back. This is another one that could actually get pummeled in the trading session. So, um, all right, I'm not going to actually take a position coming into this. Just watch S&P futures. No reason to have even ticks on the screen. Ticks are basically flat right now. Big news breaking any second here. And you're going to see some moves now. Uh, so, we're, uh, we're underway. Don't worry about whatever the news is. Doesn't matter what the jolts are. Just does not matter. The factory orders. Just watch order flow in this case. Okay. Ticks, they don't matter. All right. Nothing is going to matter in this. And as I said, with like meta, look how fast some of the moves are coming in here. Okay. As I said, though, it just doesn't, you know, order flow doesn't really care. It just is dependent upon order flow. Like order flow doesn't look at the news and go, oh, the durable goods, okay, oh, U.S. factory, like no one cares. When trade is volatile, what you have is size and size begets size, you know, as soon as some of that volume starts to spark, creates more volume in the S&Ps. Um, 
Volatility, eh, still near highs, maybe coming in a little bit. Okay. S&Ps though, again, this is uh, the move pretty nominal right now. Okay. We're just all over the place. Look at the moves though in meta. Ooh. Okay. I seek a trade in the meta. I don't like these wider bid offer spreads of these options. That is going to, that is going to piss me off. Go looking back over at NVIDIA. Uh, volatility has not started to really rally very much. Looking off to the side of my screen because I have the S&Ps on another screen. NASDAQ just cracked. NASDAQ is cracking to lows right now, but you know, neither here nor there. So I'm bringing up NVIDIA because I just want to see. It's interesting because like NVIDIA doesn't feel like it's in charge. This feels like almost full-blown correlation today, which it's not, but just a quick glance. What I'm looking for in here, the number of calls being bought, the number of calls being sold, the number of puts being bought, the number of puts being bought slightly outstrips the number of puts being sold. For the most part though, it's that's not even a, it's not even a factor right now. There's some size trade though in here. It's definitely like a lot more puts trading than typically do. I mean, you can even see in the put sizzle, the put sizzle is almost at three, the call sizzle is like just over two, but that's not that critical. Like it's not like a huge number. You know, obviously you see like, look, you wanna see some serious size, look at like Tesla, okay? Tesla's got some big boy size on it, um, but uh, nothing, nothing too grandiose. There's not a lot of puts being bought inside of Tesla, okay? Meta. Meta has pretty, you know, nominal volume, but the number of calls being bought now, okay, it's evident that there's an attempt at a rally in here. Very evident that there's an attempt in a rally in here. Um, hmm. uh, moving, uh, moving along, because again, these are the products that really make a difference right now. There's nothing, there's some put buying going on inside of Google. Uh, Amazon, it's big nothing burger and Microsoft should also probably, yeah, it's big nothing burger. Okay, there's definitely some put purchases going on inside of Microsoft, all right? Uh, even though we're starting to rally back up a little bit, as I said, <clears throat> we kind of defined specific levels in here. And again, I know that people are going to jump to ticks and they're going to be like, stop, the ticks are positive, we're rallying. Okay, ticks are positive. Are we rallying? Well, you can see it on the screen. The rally doesn't count until, you know, we're in this neighborhood up here, you know? That's, uh, again, 12 handles higher. So you got to get basically back to that 52.04. At 52.04, do not be surprised for the market to come up and right back down in here. Um, that would be uh, pretty you know, indicative of your trading day. Now, volatility is starting to drop. Here's the thing though, is volatility dropping because the news is out or is volatility dropping <laughs> because we're actually rallying? The answer is yes, both, okay? It's easy enough. Um, down the list over here, I want to bring back up uh, some of the crypto products. Okay, pretty substantial move inside of crypto has got all of the uh, the meme people, right? A little bit worried. Let's go look at like DJT today. So uh, the only reason we're looking at this got whacked yesterday. Today, there's no follow through. There's no real action in here. It's only a pretty nominal move, but it's early in the trading day. So uh, that phenomenon may uh, maybe dies out a little bit here. In the days to come, I was looking yes at uh, at some of the crypto and then some of the meme stocks because they've actually been trading at pretty high correlations as of late. Uh, Vvix has a bit under it, nothing crazy in here. Okay, all the volatility should be moving up. Obviously, the nine day VIX has uh, exploded to some degree. Don't read too deeply in here. Um, again, you're going to have to sit here and as as volatile as you might believe this day is. You know, we hit a 1% move and that's it, okay? We hit a 1% move, we're on the lower edge of an expected move. It's not as exciting as you may have thought the whole day. And by the way, did I not just draw that on the screen? We're gonna come up and we're gonna come over. We're gonna come back down. This whole day is, you know, on the lower edge of this, okay? Um, anyway, with, uh, with, with that being said, let's, um, let's sit tight over here because we're gonna go dig into a couple of positions that we still have on. All right, <clears throat> first positions, then a few stocks. Good, okay, good. Uh, dun -dun. So, uh, hmm. 
<laughs> the bond had to be paid. Okay. The bond was not paid in stock. That's, that's for one thing. Um, you know, it's a, uh, Trump happens to be a restricted uh, stockholder. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, he's never going to be able to sell that stock because he owns so much of it. I mean, that's one that whatever, he even sells a few shares and you're going to hear about it immediately. Um, <laughs> he's, he's not getting out of that, uh, that stock easily. By the way, if you are curious, some of the numbers that came out, as I said, I've been looking less and less. Um, U.S. factory, durable goods, okay? All the uh, the numbers, jolts, okay? And the jolts, they didn't do anything for me. People read into this stuff. Look, it hit what was expected. Da -da -da -da, means absolutely nothing. The durable goods, okay? Uh, just depends, factory orders. Came in a little bit hotter than expected. That's inflationary, maybe. Okay. Again, I uh, as I was saying this yesterday, I'm going to say it again today. Um, I'm looking less and less at economic data. Okay. I think you should too. Uh, pay attention to what's on the screen and listen to the noise. Uh, there is also, you know, we we keep bringing up this Fed Watch tool. Okay. In the Fed Watch tool, this is the um, the May. Here's June. You realize the June probabilities have shifted quite dramatically. June was like almost 100% chance they were going to cut. By the way, a few weeks ago, it was 100% chance they were cutting in March and May. <laughs> now in June is almost a 50-50. Not quite, but it's almost a 50-50. So here you go a little further out. Remember, let's go all the way to December. I just want to make a quick point. We go all the way to December. Right now, we're basically 525, 550. So uh, if you look at this, you know, what, uh, 450, 475, that would be what? The equivalency of about three cuts. The probability of even three cuts right now is up in the air. They're actually pricing in. Remember, we were pricing in six cuts a few weeks ago. Six cuts. If you're wondering why, like if people want a reason of why the S&Ps are selling off. Couple of weeks ago, we were pricing in six cuts. Now we're barely pricing in three cuts. Okay. This is between right here. It's almost a 30% chance here and about a 30% chance here. The distribution curve is eh, pretty, pretty flat on top. But anyway, right in here is uh, that's only like, you know, two, maybe three cuts. That's it. Okay. That is it. So uh, that's till December by November. All right. Again. One, two cuts priced in over here. Pretty interesting stuff. So the market might be reacting to that, but I just don't think it does. I think what the market's really reacting to right now is, um, is of course, a market that's been straight up. But uh, allow me to make a point uh, for just a moment here. And I'm going to step back from this, and then we're going to look at some of the positions, some individual stocks. One of the points I want to make. So the S&Ps are down 1% right now. Okay, We're still seeing rotations, big rotations. Okay, this is very, very dangerous territory. In fact, I want to express something that I haven't said in, a, in a, quite some time over here. Okay, you're looking at a day right now. This actually is one of the most dangerous days that we've seen. Okay, clearly, this is probably the most dangerous day this entire year. All right, so year to date, here we are, April 2nd. Okay, this is the absolute perfect setup for a major market move lower, okay? Does anybody see why? Why is today far more unique than any other trading day that we've actually seen recently? I was gonna say this towards the very end of my session, but I, uh, it's, it's emerging right now, so I think we have to talk about it, okay? Why is today so freaking important, okay? What do I see specifically inside of the tape? Because that's what I'm really, really asking, okay? I see something inside of the quotes that are on your screen right in front of you. <clears throat> you don't have to think it's not a trick question. I don't give a damn about the beginning of the month, the beginning of the quarter. I don't care about any of it, okay? All right, skew has been high, it's okay. Bonds are definitely rocking, okay. So let's start with bonds. Bonds are definitely rocking, okay? They've broken lower, no question about it. That's gonna damage markets. And with those bonds come higher rates, okay? That is definitely part of it. But I'm gonna tell you what I see more than anything. See an advanced decline line? Well, there's, there's, there's 22 products up, whatever, we're not correlated. I'm gonna tell you exactly what I see on the screen and it's evolving as we speak. 
I see an S&P that's down 1% and I see the financials basically unchanged in the day. I see an S&P that's down 1% and I see the energy sector that's actually up 1%. See the S&P is off 1% and the volatility, eh, it's lifting its head up. Okay. In fact, if you look at the volatility, the volatility move almost looks a little bit exaggerated today. Volatility sees it. Okay. Vol futures see it. Okay. Clearly the bonds are already kind of getting rocked a little bit. I'm really bothered by the fact that the financials are not involved in the sell side activity. Okay. Clearly the energy sector, let's call the energy sector, the odd sector out right now. There are some big, big market caps here that are unimpeded in today's sell side activity entirely. Okay. That is not good. Do you know that you have products like JP Morgan that are positive on the day? You knew that, right? Go take a look at its market cap. Okay. That's 500. Cause I know everybody's like, what about Broadcom? Forget about Broadcom. Okay. Watch. I'm just going to make a really quick point. What about Broadcom? Broadcom's market cap is almost the same as JP Morgan. I knew where I was going with this. Broadcom though, is already down by 3%, okay? You have the same kind of market cap as Broadcom right here inside of JP Morgan. Damn thing is up on the day. That is not good. You have Wells Fargo. I don't care. It's another $200 billion company. It's up on the day. All the other ones, City, okay? Whatever, 100 million here, 100 million there. They're all basically flat to up on the day. That is not a good day. That leaves so much room to the downside because I'm going to tell you how this is going to work. If they're going to really come for this market, they're going to come for them all. They're not, this is not going to be a cyclical rotation. They're going to come for them all. We just broke lows. Okay. They're going to come for them all and they are going to smash the financials. So when you're looking at this, you know, you can look at Meta until you're blue in the face. And I see Meta, oh, Meta could definitely come off. So I was looking for a position in here. But right now, okay, the real trade would be in something like JP Morgan. And in JP Morgan, if the market's going to come off, you can actually get away with this one. Damn, this is a wide bid offer spread. This is a hard market to trade. Okay, you might just want to short some JP Morgan stock. Okay, I'm just making a quick market in here. I just want to see if I can get filled. So 245, 247, come on. All right, so I filled 247 in JP Morgan. Create a duplicate order. Uh, I'll pop another couple of those. Okay. All right, so I'm 247 and I'm filled in JP Morgan. So all I did in JP Morgan is I went out and bought uh, a put. I bought the 200 puts for it's for the next three days. If, if we tank though, I'm out of this today. I'm like, I'm not trying to hold this thing overnight, but I was 247 and I went after a couple of them. And I have a few positions in JP Morgan, um, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention that if this marketplace continues to sell off, they're gonna come for those financials. You're not gonna like buy into the idea. They're gonna rotate. They're gonna start buying financials. The rotation will end. I don't know if that's the way that this plays out immediately today, but I can tell you unequivocally, it makes it the most dangerous day that we've seen this year. Um, we're not in a correlated state. You have pockets of strength in here. You never wanna see the S&Ps down 60 handles, or in this case, 1%, and there's still decent pockets of strength. You want to see the marketplace flat across the playing field, meaning that everything's getting smashed at once, right? When you have big players that are up, I know a lot of the big players up are energy stocks. I'm not, you know, I ain't new, okay? Like, look, this is actually great, you know? They like UPS, yay! Why do they like UPS? Energy prices are up. Okay, I don't care if there's news on it. They sh they'll smash the crap out of everything. I get why energy's up. Okay, energy's up because the geopolitical risks, they're hot right now. Not good hot, bad hot. Insurance, you know, is up a little bit, but your banks are doing well. Okay, banks can't do well when markets get, you know, crushed. Now, if we're wrong in here and we rally back, I want you to think about this. If the market starts to rally, tech probably rallies and they might actually still rotate out of the financials. Either way I put it, I like the financials uh, in today's trade. So this is, uh, and again, I can gladly, uh, somebody asked if I pop that into the chat room. Sure. Let's come over here, copy this, pop this into the chat room. Come on, man. Here we go, 247. And again, this is an intraday trade. Intraday trade. So, uh, We'll see how that plays. 
because <clears throat> I think it makes it an incredibly dangerous day. Because if you start thinking about this day, like a 2% move, so if you wanted to double the losses on the day and you're like, that can't happen, it's a 2% move, of course it can happen. And we're sitting on the lower edge of the expected move and threatening right now. I'm feeling threatened, okay? We're threatening right now, cracking off the lower edge of the expected move. Remember this 5180, only six points away from greatness. We'll see what actually happens in here. But for us to break lower, there has to be another sector that comes to life. The other sector of sell side activity that would come to life is gonna be in the financials. All right. So as I was saying, positions, okay, what am I doing right now? Not much. So we closed XLE yesterday. We did an intraday trade in the queues yesterday. That worked. Um, <coughs> we closed it at, uh, at almost the highs yesterday. So I was inclined just to, to whack that position. This is about a 300% gain um, today. <coughs> well, we'll look at that position as the day kind of matures. Anyway, um, as the S&Ps, uh, take a little bit of a hit today. I just want you to also be mindful. How many days in a row did you see S&Ps up like 70 or 80? So again, keep perspective that a 60 point move is not that much, okay? And I'm really like, keep perspective of it because I don't want you to get caught off guard if the S&Ps move 100 or 110 points. That's only a 2% move, okay? And as I said, like I, I actually worked with a guy who was like, oh, you know, it was like a 60 point move. Uh, I'm just making it in today's terms, like, oh, it was a 60 point move, you know? And I'm like, man, that's, that's you know, because the market had rallied so much over the years. Um, I'm like, that doesn't mean, but 1%, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so the NASDAQ's getting hit a little bit more, but that's, you know, a percent and a half, right? The financials are unchanged. Energy is up by 1%. It's not exactly a, uh, a big, scary tape, you know? JP Morgan's up almost 50 cents today. I mean, it's up almost 50 cents. It's just crazy um, that products are rallying. And again, my you know trade is, is you know, you can easily fill that right now. Products are still rallying in the midst of, you know, a marketplace that's weaker. This is where people go, no, it's because the interest rates are higher. They're going to love it. No, it's because there's still some type of rotations going on. This doesn't have to do about interest rates. This has to do about rotations. Okay. Um, all right. A few other things I wanted to mention. Lately, we've been looking a lot at retailers, okay? Like we brought up Lululemon. Lululemon is getting smoked lately. From 480 to, okay, basically 380 in, uh, there was, that's one, two, three, four trading session. Well, basically, you know, we're a week past that precipitous drop and uh, we cracked lower inside of Lulu, which had me starting to look at all of the retailers. I right? started looking at stuff like Nike and whatever. Nike on a year-to-date basis getting hammered. You know, I brought up Costco recently, okay? Because Costco, it took a big hit, but it's still up basically in line with the S&Ps in the year. It took a big hit. It's fine. Walmart, okay? Starting to, you know, roll over, but Walmart looks like any other tech stock. But there's constantly retailers coming out, okay, that are getting rocked. Uh, this is PVH, which is, is it Tommy Hilfiger and uh, what other brand? I can't remember. Some crap I probably don't wear. Anyway, um, they don't have it at Costco. I don't wear it. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, my wife's making me shop at other places other than Costco. But every time I go, I, I find like a shirt. Yeah, this one's from Costco. Okay. You got a problem with that? Because I can get the same shirt in three different colors. Okay. I was at Costco the other day, getting me a chicken and a giant ham. And I'm like looking through the clothes and I'm like, you know, like everybody else, like holding the clothes up to me. And I'm like, something is, is very wrong. <laughs> something is very wrong. And I'm going to tell you exactly what's wrong. Okay. Uh, I am not that small an individual. Okay. I'll give you the height, weight, okay? Probably about like 5'8", 170, 180, okay? Uh, in that neighborhood, I now fit into smalls. <laughs> I wear a small shirt now, okay? The hell is that possible? So I have come to the conclusion, yeah, because uh, I want you to wear it really tight. Um, but I, I remember when I was younger, I would be wearing large and that was like, you know, befitting. Then I went eventually to medium. Okay. I'm starting to think whoever's making the clothes, just making everybody feel a little better. Like, 
it's uh, it's killing me. I don't have slippers on, man. I'm wearing my my mocks. <laughs> I have moccasins, so uh, they're Nike moccasins. I really don't like Nike, but I have I have moccasins on. But anyway, I was at uh, Costco the other day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what the hell is going on? Okay, what are they what are they trying to prove over there? Um, nobody nobody has seen that. I'm dead dead serious too. So everything is just moved like a size. No, they just like a large is, is basically, they're just, you know, extra large, like a hefty bag. It's unbelievable. So they changed all the sizes, like the small still is fairly large. Okay. The large, I don't even have to wear pants. If I put on a large shirt anymore, <laughs> I could just wear a belt like wrapped around. Okay. And that's it for me. Um, it's good. <laughs> Costco is all about pos positivity. Okay. I didn't feel positive. Like, you know, as, as a man, I feel like I, I'm small now. <laughs> it's not me. It's you. <laughs> okay. It's supposed to be, it's me. It's not you, but it, you're damn right. It's you. Okay. I I'm just really noticing it though in, uh, in stores. That's, this is why they don't let me out that often. It's, <laughs> it's better that way. It's time for me to go back to the Island. I've been, I've been here far too long. Okay. Yeah, no, seriously, like that large. Okay. I, I was like holding it up to myself and yeah, I am one of the people I was wearing a baseball hat, like taking it off, like putting the shirt on over my other stuff. I don't give a damn. <laughs> I'll strip down right in the Costco, start running around. Nobody cares. Okay. It's not like I'm a cyber truck. They're not going to look at me. Okay. Um, no one cares, especially as you start to approach, like, you know, your late forties, they're like, that's just sad. <laughs> You know, middle-aged man, undressing and redressing, okay? I remember when my mom used to do that to me when I was like, I don't know, like 11 or 12, okay? What is it? They put the pants up to you and stuff and then like trying to shove them on you like right in the middle of the store in front of everybody. It's humiliating people. It's even more humiliating to think it was like in a store like Sears or JCPenney, okay? We've all been there. Just, just, just stay quiet. By the way, if you don't understand what a Sears or JCPenney is, it's because you're too damn young, <laughs> okay? Uh, it, it was before something called the internet, okay? It was before Eddie Lampert took over and destroyed the entire Sears chain, right? That's the only place I can know of that has Sears and Kmart is the island, okay? Those are my people. S&Ps are rallying back a little bit. All right, um, continuing, uh, continuing on over here. So uh, down the list. No real critical movers on the screen that are driving this. Like NVIDIA is interesting because it's near the lows. By the way, I keep looking at NVIDIA. Um, it hasn't hit any thresholds. It is not even towards the lower edge of the expected move. Whereas if you take a look at the NASDAQ, I just want to make a quick point. The NASDAQ is not on the lower edge of the expected move, whereas the S&Ps absolutely uh, are. S&Ps are on the uh, lower edge of the expected move. In fact, we're literally on the line right now. Uh, our Boeing trade has not necessarily matured very much. That's okay. We're in a good position on that one. We're fine. I'm shopping for some other opportunities in here. Again, on an intraday basis, I did short JP Morgan. Okay. I don't care that it's straight up. This one, okay. I like it, but I don't like it right now. I'm going to like it for later in the day. This rotation should, uh, should cease to exist. But uh, interestingly enough, uh, stocks like Meta, very, very funky trade in here, okay? And it's, you know, if, if I'm Jeff Bierman, I'm screaming about like algorithms trying to prop stuff up over here. I actually wouldn't disagree with just that, okay? There is definitely an attempt at this point to, uh, to continue to kind of prop things up uh, in there. Uh, in any regard, <clears throat> as you look at the S&Ps today, you know, as much as you want to think of it, again, this big, exciting day, it's a day that we're sitting on the lower edge of the expected move. And the whole day comes down to, are we going to crack off of it? If we rally back up, well, look, we've all seen that before. Like, who cares, right? Um, and if we rally back up, you know, no harm, no foul. It's not going to damage any of our positions other than maybe like, you know, the intraday. Even if we rally, though, I don't think JP Morgan is going to be rallied into. They're probably going to come rally into the tech and maybe even rotate out of uh, like a rotation into tech and a rotation out of uh, out of some of the financials, it's plausible for later in the day. Okay, you know the things that really 
are, in my opinion, not good. Uh, oil, which had a bigger bid under it, it's fading a little bit, but you know, we're oil in your mid $80 a barrel oil, right? That's not good. Incredibly inflationary. Obviously, all the entire energy complex is up on that. Other things that are a little bit more worrisome than we've seen lately. The move on the VIX looks over exaggerated for a 1% move, okay, in markets. So I know that there's other economic data coming later in this week, but whatever. This marketplace is not going to wait for the employment situation. Nobody cares that much about it. You know, it's becoming less and less imperative. There is, there is Fed speak today, tomorrow. I think like John Williams and Loretta is speaking today. Uh, I don't think that Fed speak is going to matter that much right now because the Fed fund futures have basically spoken. Okay. There's strong data, but the interesting thing is there's more and more companies right now starting to come out and warn. So it's a little bit of like a catch 22, you know, on one hand, strong data, which is what the Fed looks at. Believe me when I tell you, the Fed is also listening to companies like Tommy Hilfiger that's like, hey, this is not going to look good. Um, I don't think anybody's concerned okay, until they see it really showing up in the market. It'll show up in the tech stocks. When the tech stocks start getting hit, people are going to be concerned at that point. Um, we do have, again, a very pivotal situation in today's trading session. Not tomorrow, not a couple of days from now. The pivotal side, okay, of today's trading session is again, in effect, we're not correlated. We're not seeing the market get hit across the board. You know, when S and P's are really getting hit hard, like when markets are getting punched right in the face, okay, there's no pockets of strength, okay. When you hit them, you hit them all and markets will start to flatten out. Yes, there's always going to be like, oh, look, you know, I didn't even mention like CVS and Humana. And you want to see something get the, you want to see something that's really ugly. Okay. I didn't even mention this. Um, that's real. Okay. That's real. And it's spectacular. It's about the third time I've used that one today. I'm on a Seinfeld run. Okay. This is, uh, well, multiple, multiple year lows. Humana is getting absolutely annihilated. Um, this just changes Medicare, Medicaid. So United Healthcare getting tagged. Okay, be careful in United Healthcare. If you think United Healthcare is going to continue down, if you think United Healthcare continues down, that means you're utterly bearish in the Dow. The Dow is completely dependent upon United Healthcare is by far okay the biggest monkey on the block in here, and it's it's a critical component okay of uh, of Dow, and you can see Dow is taking just a little bit of a larger hit on a percentage basis than the S&Ps are. So be mindful of, uh, of just that. So uh, CVS is also getting tagged on that one, but uh, pretty good gap to the, uh, to the downside in there. So uh, that's it. Again, to, uh, to sum up some of the trades, the only thing I've done today, I put the trade on JP Morgan, right? That's the only actual trade I've done live here today is a whack to position into JP Morgan. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, throughout the course of the day. Remember, the JP Morgan trade is intended intended to be an intraday trade, okay? What's JP Morgan doing? Nothing, all right? What makes this such a dangerous day is because JP Morgan is doing nothing. So again, we can talk about interest rates, as I said, until you're blue in the face, but if volatility emerges, nobody gives a damn. When volatility emerges, okay, they don't hit one, they don't hit others, they hit them all. And that's why I think this makes it the most dangerous day that we've actually seen recently. With that, we're going to bring on the professor. Jeff Bierman is going to be coming on here uh, momentarily, okay, as Jeff Bierman actually emerges from the dark, okay. Um, he's, uh, he's actually um, going to uh, get into detail today, inside out, the signaling power of uh, inside versus outside days. This is evidently an outside day, so... Uh, yeah, stay tuned, Jeff. I'll bring you.